Did you just get your new Arduino Q and you want to do some cool stuff with it? Maybe you're not sure what to do. Well, in this video, I am going to show you three easy and fun projects that you can set up within minutes of unboxing your new Arduino Q. And not only are they fun in and of themselves, but you can also kind of learn something from these sketches to understand the capabilities of this new board you have. Hey, my name's Mike Chage. I'm the owner of Programming Electronics Academy and also the author of the Arduino Book for Beginners. I help folks learn how to build stuff with Arduino. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into this first project. All right, first up is the weather forecast application that you can run on your Arduino Q. You give it a city, and it will show you a little emoji of what the weather is at your current location on the LED matrix that's on the Arduino Q. This is great because you don't need any additional hardware and the software comes preloaded for you. So all you're gonna do when you're in the app lab is kick, click on this weather forecast on LED matrix. Now you can go ahead and click run and everything's gonna go up and working for you, which is great, but it's going to be giving you the weather from Italy. You know, that's where Arduino is at. This is weather from Turin, Italy. And what you really probably want to do is get weather from, you know, a location a little closer to home. And so if you want to do that, you need to click copy and edit. So you got to give it a name. And then you just need to come over to the left where they list all the files. Go down to sketch and click sketch.eno. That's going to open up the Arduino sketch that is running on the microcontroller unit that's on the board and you'll notice that the city down here is like line 28 it's a string it says Turin that's Turin Italy I'm just gonna change this to somewhere close to me which is good old Cleveland Ohio and now once I've done that I can click run since it already had that app running I gotta say hey yep we're gonna confirm and replace and now I'm gonna get weather for Cleveland now I already know what the forecast is gonna be bright and sunny no I'm joking overcast but you get the idea. It was that easy. I typed the city name, clicked run, and now it's working. So that's pretty fun. So what's going on behind the scenes here? Well, you know, there's actually quite a bit going on, but I'm going to try to briefly explain this. The reason this is so easy to get done is because they have what's called these things called bricks. And this is using a brick. It's called the weather forecast brick. And the way I think about bricks is they're basically libraries, code libraries that help you get stuff done. And the weather forecast brick, as you might imagine, helps you get weather forecasts. And if you click on the brick, it'll give you some API documentation on how to use it, some usage examples, all the stuff is good. And if you come down to the Python code, you can see in this first line, they go ahead and import a weather forecast from these bricks, you know, this weather forecast brick here. So you import it into the Python file. So now I've got access to this brick. They make a weather forecast object and then a function that grabs the forecast. Now what's important is they provide a bridge. And what this bridge does essentially is allow the microcontroller unit on your Arduino Q to get access to the return value of this function. So it is providing get weather forecast, which is the name of this function. And now if we go ahead and look in the sketch here, in the .eno sketch, we'll see in setup, they also start a bridge. And then down in loop, they have bridge.call and they're calling that get weather forecast. What they do is they pass it the city. So they're passing it the current city you're in. So in my case, it will pass Cleveland and then it's gonna get the result as a category. So is it sunny, cloudy, rainy, snowy, foggy? And then based on that, it plays an animation. So I think this weather forecast brick is going to be an easy way to pull in weather data in different projects you might build. Okay, next project. Now the next project is similar in that it uses the LED matrix on the Arduino Q, but this time it doesn't use a brick. It just goes to an API online and pulls air quality and then displays an emoji on the LED matrix. So if you go to the air quality example, You'll see down here, these are the different emojis it'll show based on the air quality. Now with this one, you can't just click run. You actually have to grab a token in order for this to work from an air quality open data platform. You'll have it done within a minute. You just follow the instructions here. Basically, you click a link and you get a uh, secret key or a token, they call it, and then you paste that into the app. So I've already done that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to my apps right here. I'll go to the copy and now I'll click run. All right, and you can see I got the smiley face. That means, hey, I can go outside and breathe. I'm not dying. So how does this one work behind the scenes? Well, it's quite different. It's not using any bricks at all. And if you go to the Python sketch, you can see that it's going to a specific endpoint 
for that API, basically a URL on the web, and it's gonna feed in whatever city you put up in here. In my case, again, I put in Cleveland, and then it takes the API token that you had. That API gives you a number, and then they have a function that kind of maps it out to a description, you know, from good to hazardous. And this is the function that actually goes and grabs that data from the endpoint. And then notice again, they've got a bridge.provide. So they're saying, hey, Arduino microcontroller on this Arduino queue, we're gonna give you access to this get air quality function right here. And now if we go over to the Arduino sketch, the .eno, you can see that we start the bridge and set up, and then we make the bridge call to the air quality, get the result, and then we use that result to show that different emoji. I'm calling it an emoji. I, I don't know what you'd call it, image, whatever. All right, so you can see that this whole bridge thing is a big deal with the Arduino Q. And I actually wrote some code that will hopefully help you understand how the bridge works. I tried to take out everything but these bridge calls. And if you wanna check it out, I link to it in the description. Or you can just scan this QR code and get the files for hopefully it will make clear this bridge call stuff. Another quick and easy project to set up is this Arduino Q pin toggle. So I'll just go ahead and open this up. And what this allows you to do is it opens up a web interface and you can basically turn on and off all the different pins on the Arduino Q. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And what it's gonna do is open up a tab in your web browser. So I'm in Chrome. And you know, I'm in the web browser and now what I can do is click this and it will actually turn that pin on and off. The easiest way to see it is down on these. There's a couple RGB LEDs on here. You can go ahead and click this. It'll turn the red on, it'll turn the green on and the blue, you know, for that RGB three, same with the four, which is kind of fun. So this is neat. I mean, you could imagine that you might have, you know, some other circuit hooked up to D14 or whatever it might be. And this would be an easy way to control that circuit. That's a lot of fun. So how is this thing working behind the scenes? Well, it uses this web UI HTML brick. And what this allows you to do is really build interesting web user interfaces. So if you've ever done any front end development and use JavaScript, that kind of thing, you can basically build, you know, a JavaScript script front end, have a Python back end, and then have a back back end, you know, running the MCU so you can actually do physical things in the world. It really creates an interesting way to interact with a microcontroller. And you can imagine if this is a standalone device, you know, you've just got your Arduino Q hooked up to a USB dongle, a display, a keyboard, and a mouse. That's just a very common interface for people. They, they understand how to interact with a web browser with a keyboard and mouse. So they could be clicking away on some image that you've made or some interface, and you can wire it up so all those commands will flow eventually to your microcontroller unit that's on the Arduino Q and have some interesting stuff happen. I mean, I feel like the possibilities are pretty endless there. Now, like I said, it does get a bit more complicated because not only are you bridging information from the Python code to the sketch, but you're also having to bridge information to the JavaScript. Now, I mentioned before I had some code and that code talks about going down to the Python layer and then down to the sketch layer. So if you wanna check that out, go ahead and take a look at the descriptions. So the next video you should watch is this one right here. It's three Arduino tips. It's a pretty quick video. Basically, it's gonna tell you three things I wish I would've known when I started working with Arduino years and years ago. This video right here.